this video let's take a look at project settings and page settings. So to access the project settings we can click on this icon or go to file project settings. Once again if you have used blocks 3 before this will be pretty familiar but this time around of course we have much more options. First of all, we can change the name of the site. We can put the web address or URL of our website, and this will be used to automatically generate the sitemap for our website. We can now change which page will be the index page, or basically the home page of our website. We can change the default language of our website. We can switch the type from HTML to PHP. And we can enable any of the supported CMS platforms. And of course, this blocks for the big news is that we now have WordPress available as CMS platform. This is very big new future, which we'll be covering in a separate course in coming months. Also new in blocks 4, we can now add the body classes in project settings. Body classes can be applied to all of the pages on our project. And as before, we have the active link class, which will allow us to style the link for the active page. Finally, we have the embed assets in project file feature here enabled by default. And we really like this feature, but if you don't, you can uncheck it here. If we move to the second tab, we have the typography settings here. And here we can set the default fonts and font style for four breakpoints. And we can do that for all of the headers, paragraph, links, and even logo text. We can set the size, line height, color, and direction. And if you want, you can disable the Google fonts. In the future videos, we will cover in detail how to set the default typography for our website. For now, let's switch to the tab number three, which is the default style for our buttons. In the next step, we have the images, and from here we can add the favicon or logo to our website, and we can enable the image protection on our website. This will help us prevent users from easily saving images from our website. In the next step, we can place the Google Analytics code. We have a dedicated tab for project attachments, so if you want to attach the JavaScript files, CSS, JSON or folders, you can do it from here. Also new in Blocks 4, we now have the Recapture. This is a very useful feature developed by Google, which allows us to avoid spam on our forms. All you need to do is to sign up on Google Recapture website and put your site key and secret key right here and you will be able to place the Recapture brick to any of your forms. Next we have the little details pane as well as the tab for all of our social accounts. Another cool feature in Blocks 4, we can now set the default export settings and more importantly, the default export location. This will allow us to generate the export files in the folder we want with just a one click. Finally, we have ability to disable animations on small and extra small breakpoints, and we can enable or disable preloader, as well as change the style to anything we like. And if we are building the WordPress theme, we can now set the thumbnail and change a couple of options here in the last tab of project settings. So this is project settings, let's take a look at page settings. Page settings can be accessed from a couple of places. First of all, in page navigator, we have this icon here. We can go to page settings or we can go to this top right corner and click on this little icon. So page settings in blocks 4 have much more options. As before, we can change the type of the page as well as the language. We can enable or disable the top or bottom global areas, which will be used for header and footer, and change a couple of other options. We now have the dedicated SEO pane and here we can put the browser title, keywords and description which will be used in Google search results. 
Also new in blocks 4, we now have ability to enable the robot meta tag, index this page and follow links which will be greatly improving our search engine optimization. If you don't know what each of this means, you can hover your mouse over the text and blocks will provide you a simple tooltip explaining what it is. Finally, down here we have the ability to enable the canonical meta tag, which is a very useful feature allowing Google and other search engines to know that this page represents the master copy. In the third tab we have the social card settings and this will be very useful because it will help us to increase the engagement on social media. We are able to set the title and description as well as the preview image for Twitter or Facebook and I think this will be very useful for our web pages because now blogs pages on Twitter and Facebook will be much more appealing. Finally we have ability to add the code to any of our pages as well as add the page file attachments. So in the next video I will show you how we can build the page in blocks using blocks and bricks.